we started inviting more people who have never shared their personal story before. And I'm telling you, that's when the audiences started growing. Because I truly, truly believe that when we share our personal stories, we have the power to transform lives, starting with our own. Anyone remember Mae West? Who Mae West? Yes. And I, so I read her autobiography and I wrote a play about her. And I played her, <laughs> of course. I played her. And it was exciting and there was great music and it was really, really one of these, you know, sang these old standards and it was just amazing. And I was just, just this wide-eyed human being, let's go. And the first day, full house, amazing. The first week, amazing. And then, we got the reviews. But the person I remember the most was a woman who appeared to be in her 70s. I said, good morning. She looked at me, she smiled, she nodded, she put her head down. I thought, okay, well, it's an experiment after all. It's not gonna be 100%. But just before she got off the bus, she looked at me, gave me a big smile, took a big breath, and then stuttered out with a very thick accent, good morning. It became obvious to me she'd been rehearsing the whole bus ride. Then I knew I could have positive impact on someone. Even though they walked awkwardly on stage and walked awkwardly off, they connected with the dancer inside and for that two minutes, they looked like Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. I was so happy that the second thing that happened was they so connected with the crowd that they cheered and applauded them over the top. The third thing was, it was like a water fountain that you could not turn off was connected to the tear ducts of the parents and the principal. And the fourth thing, which was special to me, was I connected with the message, the dancer of life, how to master any goal, any skill, any dream. The real turning point came at the end of the show. And if you ever wondered what it's like to date a hypnotist, I found out. Because the hypnotist gave a suggestion that he got everybody to fall in love with him. And he danced with everybody up on stage just by putting out his hand. Everybody danced with him very romantically, guys and gals. And then he, very funny. And then he looked at my girlfriend and did this. And she, I kid you not, was like a deer in headlights. And she did this. <laughs> she danced with the hypnotist. And that was the turning point. Thanks. And I ended up, a few years ago, I ended up going to this lawyer's house. And when I got there, uh, I was painting the first, first room that night, day. I get in there, and all the furniture is moved in the center. And it's so meticulously organized. And on top of all that, you couldn't find not one piece of dust. And what do I see on the hardwood floor is this shiny loony. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's a test. But it's such a blatantly obvious test that, you know what, I started to get offended. The whole day I'm wondering, like, how is he to test me? How dare he test me? You know what, if he can test me, well, why can't I test him? So at the end of the day, you know what I did? I put a loony next to his loony <laughs> to see if he'd take it. Because if, then if he takes it, that means he failed his own test, not my test. Gonna show that guy. She opened the door wide and she said, You are the lady I've been waiting to meet. Come on in. So I went in. I sat down in her office, and in front of me on the table was two huge treasure chests of glowing, bright colored crystals. And on the walls were pictures of angels. And I thought to myself, what have I got myself into? Comes 
Thank you. Good night. Hey, what's in it?